I'm Roy. I'm Yale. And I'm Holly. And we're the DNMR team. This much can kill. So why do we have such dangerous substances in the NMR lab? The resonant frequency of an NMR nucleus is given as a frequency relative to a reference signal for that nucleus. The signal seen here on the right. For proton NMR, the standard sample which we use is tetramethylsilane or TMS, a colorless volatile liquid. For other nuclei, we need different standard samples. For example, for nitrogen, we use liquid ammonia, and for phosphorus, we use concentrated phosphoric acid. As a result, there are lots of different standard samples for lots of different nuclei. Some of these samples are unpleasant, unstable, and downright dangerous, which leads us to the story of dimethyl mercury, which is the standard for 199 mercury NMR. This is the 199 mercury NMR of dimethyl mercury. I prepared this sample in November 1996, 21 years ago. At the time, it wasn't clear how dangerous this material really was. A few months earlier, in August of that year, Professor Karen Waterhan, an expert in mercury and heavy metal poisoning, was preparing a standard sample for mercury NMR, and she spilt a couple of drops on her hand, even though it was covered in a latex glove. A month after I prepared that sample, Karen Waterhan fell ill and subsequently died from the mercury exposure she had received that August. Latex gloves do provide good protection against inorganic materials such as concentrated nitric acid, which is very strong. As you can see, I can put my finger in it and no ill effect. Whereas if I throw this limestone rock in it, it immediately reacts. Why don't latex gloves protect us against certain compounds? Like, this is an organic solvent, but a volatile, it's dichlor or methane. And we'll just see what happens if I put my hand in it. It is actually 40,000 less, 40,000 times less uh, poisonous than diamonds are working. Then I take my hands off. I do feel that the uh, that the air in the glass has suddenly disappeared. And we'll see what happens over the next period of time. I feel a very slight uh, burning sensation on the right hand. The glass should go right away on the left hand. Beginning to feel something now. Over the following six minutes or so, my right hand started hurting more and more, whilst any trace of pain in the left hand disappeared, showing that instead of protecting my hand, the latex glove actually made things worse. The whole area now is burning. I'm going to just take the glove off and see if there's any difference in the color of the skin. It just feels like it's burning, but it's slightly less burning than the spiked redness here, but nothing you can really tell the difference. This much dimethyl mercury is enough to kill someone. To put it into perspective, you would need this much cyanide to kill someone. In 2001, the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry came out with a set of recommendations for referencing chemical shifts in NMR spectra. They replaced the requirement to have a sample for each nucleus with the use of a ratio that would relate the reference frequency to the reference of proton NMR, in other words, TMS. If you look at the table, you will see at the bottom there is actually a ratio written down for mercury and that is based on the signal of dimethylmercury, but it now makes all 
the other reference samples obsolete, although they are still useful to check whether you can actually detect each nucleus. For that reason we have kept the samples, however we are left with a large number of samples, some of which are dangerous. The problem is that these samples are very fragile and what would happen if one of the dangerous samples was to get broken? So we decided to make a protective case for the samples using stiff plastic tubing and then test to see if it really worked on some old, poor quality NMR tubes. We tried dropping the tube from a height of 3 meters, stepping on the tube and running it over with a nitrogen tank weighing over 100 kilos. In all cases, this tube remained undamaged. These are the materials we're dealing with. This is dimethylmercury, the very poisonous material. It's actually quite heavy, about 3 grams per centimeter cube, a colorless liquid, as you can see. We're going to put it away in here. So we'll first wrap it up. The dimethyl cadmium has uh, decomposed slightly with age, but you can see there's still quite a bit of liquid in there. I don't know how good the NMR spectrum will be, but I'm going to put it away anyway, in case we ever need it. It's somewhat less poisonous than uh, dimethyl mercury, but still poisonous enough to warrant uh, this sort of treatment. So there you have it. Two very dangerous chemicals, packaged so that they should not uh, be easily broken. Please visit our website, the NMR Lab. If you like this video, subscribe.